Now I bet you can hear me even better. I won't start over. Uh, to maximize public safety while still maintaining transparency and public access, members of the public can observe the meeting via Zoom. And I'm sure there are thousands out there who are. All right, we are ready for a roll call. Staff, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Wong. Commissioner Andres. Commissioner Piazza. Vice Chair Kuramitsu. Present. And Chair Burke. Present. We have quorum. Very good. All right, so public comment. Is there any member of the public who would like to make a comment at this time? Hearing none, seeing none, we shall move on. Um, consent calendar items. Now, Allison, so consent calendar, the, um, the minutes, is a member of the consent calendar, so we're just going to consent to the calendar. We're not going to specifically call the, out the minutes. Uh, for the record, this is Allison Becker, the deputy director for the Community Development Department. Uh, Chair, you can um, kind of take a, the temperature of the uh, commission. If there are any recommended changes, then of course we would pull them from the consent calendar, make the changes, and then proceed with a vote on the minutes. If the minutes all look good um, and you would like to adopt them as they are, then they can just go as one group on the consent calendar. We are looking for a move to approve the minutes as presented. Does anybody have any comments or would somebody care to make such a motion? I move to uh, approve. You move to approve. Second, is there any discussion on that? Any other changes? All in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. Aye. Nay. Minutes are approved. Okay. Business items. Uh, commission introductions. And we have our new commissioner here. And Dolores, I want you to know we, we want to welcome you very much to be a part of this commission. We hope that you'll be here for a very long time. Had you been here a little longer, I would have been lobbying for you to be the chair. But <laughs> since this is your first meeting, we'll let you slide. Um, do you want to, we'll go around and we'll all just take two seconds to introduce ourselves. Would you like to begin? Do you, is your mic on? You have to turn on the button at the bottom. I am Dolores Piazza. And I have lived in South Pasadena for over 20 years. And what do you do that makes you um, uh, uh, perfect to be on this commission? I've been a designer, um, art designer, art director uh, for about the same amount of time. Okay. And I also did a little work in film design along the way. Good. Okay, well, great. We're glad to have you here. Stephen, do you want to introduce yourself? I am Steve Wong. I've been a resident of South Pasadena, I believe, for 12 or 13 years. Um, I'm currently the director at the Vincent Price Art Museum at East LA College. And I, uh, and I have two kids uh, who are currently at South Pass High. Hmm. South Pass High. High school. Wow. Yeah, they're, they're getting old. They're getting big. Yeah, <laughs> they're getting big. Um, I am Jeff Burke. I am very privileged at the moment to be the chair, though that could be changing. We'll see how that goes. Um, I am a local resident, have lived in South Pass for a very long time since the dinosaurs were here. Um, I have a studio at the corner of Grand and Mission right across the street from Trader Joe's. And I make um, uh, beautiful scenes of utopian bliss as a form of my art because I spent many years in Catholic school. Emily. Hi, I'm Annalie Andres. I've lived in South Pasadena for 17 years. I have had, uh, I have three children that have gone through the schools here. My youngest is a junior at the high school. Um, I am an art historian. I teach art history at Pasadena City College. I also am the president of Art in Context, a uh, adult education, art history, education and travel business. Hi. <laughs> I'm um, Chris Kuramitsu, and I have lived in South Pass for 12 years. Um, and I have two kids, one at one of the elementary schools, and one at the middle school. Um, and I am a curator um, and teacher and 
art consultant and et cetera, et cetera. So <laughs> nice to meet you and welcome. Good. Well, I'm glad that we've got that all got ourselves all introduced. Um, and now it is time, and I, I vary wildly from the script, but there it is. It is time for us to choose a new chair and vice chair. Is there anyone that would care to serve as chair of this commission going forward, Chris? <laughs> is there a second to her uh, self-nomination? I'll second it. There you go. All in favor of Chris Kermatsu being coming our new chair, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I think you're unanimous. Congratulations. And um, before I hand it over to you, let's just uh, name a vice chair as well. Uh, yes, I'd like to nominate myself to be the vice chair of this committee. All in favor of Annalie becoming vice chair, please say aye. 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 Unanimous again. Congratulations, Chris Kuramatsu. You are now the chair of this meeting. <laughs> I hand you the gavel and the base and the script there you go oh, but script. mostly just go by the agenda being drunk with power <laughs> okay i knew you would be um let's see so where are we we are chair if i may um can you move the uh, there you go so you can hear you better okay there you go hello thank you okay so um let me see. All right. So we are reorganized. We are. Um, thank you. We will now move to presentation item number six, public art donation policies. Staff, do we have a presentation? Yes, we do. Good evening, Commissioners. Cielo Frostalupo, Management Intern with the City Manager's Office. Today, I will pre be presenting a staff report regarding an art donation policy for the City of South Pasadena. The goal of the staff report is to begin a conversation about developing guidelines on art donations specifically. Public art is an opportunity to enhance community engagement with residents, business partnerships, and visitors. The city manager's office and community development department met in preparation for this item to get a better understanding of the current process. Both the city manager's office and the library have conducted have contacted, have been contacted by residents or interested donors regarding potential donated art pieces. It is my understanding that not only is the city considering an art donation policy, but the Library Board of Trustees is also considering one as well with their own commission. The following examples of some of the items received at the library and city hall are shown in the images. I would like to note that the library has created a moratorium in the meantime in case residents want to donate. The chart before you shows a few cities that have an art donation policy in place. The staff reached out to some of these cities to get a better understanding of their policies. Within these cities, there were many distinctions and similarities but the chart highlights the element of the policies that are most frequently shared. That is, cities that accept art, minimum or maximum cost value, an application process, a review process, maintenance of the donation, and if there is a formal program that coexists with the policy. 
Based on staff research, Los Angeles and West Hollywood had very comprehensive policies. Given the chart and what other cities do to accept art, staff is requesting the Public Art Commission to consider the following recommendations. To develop an application, deciding whether or not there should be a minimum or maximum donation value, establish an official review process, discussing an appraisal process, and display criteria such as a plaque, including name, year, or who donated it. City staff believes South Pasadena should glean from West Hollywood's art donation policy. West Hollywood's policy is in place to respond to existing and anticipated future donation inquiries. After speaking with West Hollywood staff, we found that they are less likely to accept any donations due to proper lack of storage space. With regard to how we craft the language, we want to be sure that our policy for our donation is explicit at our discretion that we dispose or liquidate donations in the future. During your discussion today, staff would like to note for your consideration that the city has minimal space to accept art due to lack of property display and storage space. Staff would also like to share that technology such as the city's application or website may serve as a tool where donors could digitally submit and self-identify their donations. Thank you for your time. Staff is present to answer any questions. Thank you very much. That was very informative. Thank you. Um, does anyone have any questions for staff? Yeah, I guess I have uh, some questions. Um, great job. That was very interesting. And I really enjoyed reading um, your what you submitted uh, to us um, online, uh, the fuller format, where I think it what, what was the city West Hollywood's donation application, which I, I liked. I had a chance to look at that. Um, I think this really lends itself to a larger question, um, something that we're, we've been discussing in an ad hoc committee, um, discussing kind of a larger handbook for citywide art policy, where I think this would be one of multiple um, issues addressed. And um, uh, which would allow, I think, kind of a broader question because, yes, this donation is certainly one issue among many, particularly in terms of kind of developing an evaluation criteria for works of art within the city of South Pasadena. And I think that's something that might need to be addressed before we just um, drill down on the uh, donations. Um, and I think that's something that I I I, I think we, we should we should address. And I think that's something that I personally would like to ask uh, staff to develop a handbook for citywide arts policy. Um, and that would be a starting point. And of course, this would also include donations, memorials, um, as well as um, broader issues. Um, I know we're going to be talking about this our ad hoc meeting in our notes later. I don't know if this is the time to, to, to go into that or. Again, for the record, Alison Becker, um, if I may suggest, um, because at the community development department level, we've been asked by the city manager's office to, um, to consider it, to continue to advance at least an application other other sorts of tools to help with the art donation piece of the equation um, that you all consider advising staff to proceed while at the same time incorporating it into this larger work that we're going to be doing. Um, also of note was um, the fact that the Board of Commissioners uh, at the library department does um, have uh, authority in their charter to accept donations. Um, and those requests have been coming 
perhaps more frequently than in the past, which is why there is a sense of urgency to kind of organize this piece of our work. So that, that's just a suggestion. Um, I, I mean, I, I think it, by taking a step back, by, uh, what Anna Lee had mentioned of like talking about um, discussing the criteria, I, I do believe that we need to take a further step back and, and, and what are the ultimate goals of, of acquiring work for the city? I, I think, and I think that brings up the bigger question of, of, of figuring out our arts policy as a whole uh, before we even tackle this, I, I believe. Um, I, I think that um, to work simultaneously, like, if we come up with an arts policy that we, we recommend that we don't, uh, the city does not acquire or collect uh, or you know receive donations, then I, I feel that it could you know the the work progressing that on that simultaneously could be kind of wasted work until we figure out that policy. Um. So what what do we? Can I? Yeah. May I make a yeah, quick absolutely. comment? Um. One of the goals I believe that we had when we first created this ad hoc committee was to um, not only create a public arts policy for the purpose of receiving gifts to the city, but also whether or not we were going to approve the uh, and incorporate the Americans for the Arts recommendations on best practices for public art. And in doing so, one of the goals was to make it clear to, you know, the LA region and the country at large that South Pasadena is a city that is uh, respectful and um, grateful for the artists that we have in our community and that come through here. Um, we are an artist friendly city. And I hope that whatever it is that we decide that we will in fact, move forward to council the idea that the city should accept and adopt the best practices for public art that Americans for the Arts has put forward in their white paper, which we have submitted already. Uh, I, I'm hoping that that would be part of the goal of what we're doing here. But if I could continue my question though, is, is I think I, it would help me if, if I understood what the ultimate goal is of receiving works. Um, I've I've worked at uh, two museums and I've been on collections and acquisitions committees. Uh, and if we really want to be an arts friendly city, uh, I think the utmost importance is is if if we if the city receives something, do they care for it in perpetuity? Uh, are do are there like are there environmentally safe uh, storage areas to to care for these works? Uh, and that brings on a big liability, I would imagine, if we're unable to do that, and then we can't call ourselves an art friendly city if. If we don't have the facilities that, I, in my opinion, should be museum quality facilities to store where it works. Uh, and I'm just worried about like, opening a can of worms uh, by bringing in, you know, and there's the politics too. A lot of donors, oftentimes they donate to museums and I would imagine to the city for tax write-offs. <laughs> and that's kind of a major vetting process. Um, and, you know, just by allowing donations and uh, application process, I, I think it could be a quite um, a big task to do that. But I guess I throw the question back at you. So what is the ultimate goal of, of receiving donated artworks? Like, how does that benefit the city? Um, so that, that would be a reason for bringing this up for a discussion. Um, we feel kind of the same way you're feeling about the liability and the kind of um the maintenance that is going to go along with the products the items that we're going to be receiving um so we found that the cities that are on this chart many of them did have a policy in their policy there was a part that had a maintenance section and it was whether the city was going to be maintenance maintaining the item piece or whether the donor would be maintaining the item piece. Um, and for us, during our multiple discussions, we kind of agreed that there is a big liability that comes with taking care and taking in the pieces that are donated to us, which is why we have been 
looking for recommendations on what to do with the pieces that we receive. Um, we, during our discussions, we found it better that the maintenance goes to the donor who is donating to us. Um, if, if anything were to happen to the item pieces, we, we would want to make sure that the donor who is giving it to us knows how to maintain properly. And we also discussed that in the application for donation pieces, that we would have a part for maintenance on how to take care for that piece. So we found it best that the maintenance would go to the donor and um, it would be separately apart from the city. If the donor is donating the piece, they would know how to take care of it and how to care for it. They would recommend us where to storage and to place the piece. So, yeah. That's an illustration of the all of the factors that need to be considered as a part of a review process to determine whether or not the city should accept a donation of, of art. And you're right that until we have the criteria of how we prioritize uh, what kind of art, um, it's, it's very problematic for the city. And I think, again, as you've heard, the, the board of um, library trustees has come up against this issue quite frequently where very well-intentioned uh, residents would, would like to make gifts. Um, and and yeah, until we have a policy that says, this is the type of art that we are able to responsibly maintain, um, we're kind of in a pickle. So, so your point is well taken, uh, Commissioner Wong, and um, Vice Chair Andres' position is also well taken. That this in, this top level piece of what are our priorities will really drive um, a lot of these subsequent kind of processing questions. You, you, you know, that said, I did look through what you presented. And I did like, you know, where you guys were. I thought you were on the right track. I think the West Hollywood was a really good start. Um, I liked how there was, you know, up front with the donors saying that, you know, we have very limited space, um, that uh, we, you know, th that this was very much at the forefront of our minds in the city of South Pasadena. Also that you were addressing like, you know, honestly with about deaccess deaccessioning, that that was something, I mean, what I thought something that might be, you know, beneficial to this would be to, you know, also state that, let's say we can only deal with these types of um, applications maybe for a few months of the year, like the beginning of the year. So we streamline that. So we, we accept them or we'll consider them from January to March or, you know, so we can process this. Um, also, I thought that perhaps every you know, to be very upfront that there was like a review of any memorial every 10 years as a reconsideration or whatever, you know, we decide. But I do think that this is something that really does need to be addressed in a much larger context. And I know that our ad hoc committee is really dealing with that. And I know we're, you know, pedal to the metal is happening in that regard. So that's my feedback. Yeah, I, I think this, body is perfect for helping develop criteria but i think and maybe the higher level question is not you know not for us but i i would really like to know like how does the city benefit from these donations and i think that's the big question for me and again maybe we don't answer that uh maybe you know the city decides that and then we come in and develop a criteria or help develop a criteria um but i i think you know because i know that like the costs that are involved with taken on artwork, which is just sometimes really crazy, that I'm just, I'm just thinking like, what is the ultimate benefit for the city? Um, and I, I, I'm curious about that, but I don't know if that's our place to, uh, 
decide or question. Roger. Um, it, it seems to me that I, I, I hear your, your, your question and it makes a lot of sense. I would think in answer to that question, um, someone from the library would probably be a good place to start because if they currently have been accepting gifts, then they will know what they do with them and how much space they have. I realize it's a given that, that you know, space is valuable. Also too, we, there's a lot of reference to West Hollywood and I, I think West Hollywood has a great public arts program. I'm friends with a fellow who was on their public arts commission for a long time. They also have a much larger staff. I think they have four people just on the public arts staff. Um, West Hollywood is one of the most densely, I didn't know this either. They're one of the most densely populated cities in America. Didn't know that more than right there with Manhattan. Um, so there, there is that. And I, and I hear what you're saying and we do need to get to the bottom of that. But, you know, again, taking a step backwards, let's be very frank in our discussion here. The reason that we are discussing this now is because two years ago, kids from the high school formed themselves a committee, the Anti-Bias Club, and they decided they were going to put up a mural and they wanted to put it on city property. And that didn't work out for city hall, but then they found something over at the former site of the plunge, the current tennis courts. And the proposal and the mural, as you recall, was brought to this commission and we approved it five nothing and we sent it along to city council. And I see our, our council liaison, council member Cacciotti in the back there. And so he can, if I, if I speak out of line, let me know. Um, and at that point, I believe when the, when it came down to it, the answer was, we can't accept it because we don't have a public arts policy. So that was the reason that the mural was not necessarily declined, but was put on hold until such time, if ever, that this city does come up with a public arts policy. That was a very big motivation for us putting together this policy. Now, the policy has become a lot more. Um, and I know that Annalie has spent a long time working on it. So I guess what we really have to do is on the one hand, we do have to measure out what council member, what commissioner Wong, am I reading forward or what? <laughs> what commissioner Wong um, is suggesting is that, you know, what's the point? Do we have space? I mean, we do want to take uh, submissions of, of, you know, donations of public art, um, but by the same token, you know, we are limited with the amount of space what it really comes down to, though, I mean, we can answer the technical question of whether or not there is space to be had. The question is for things that would be besides taking physical storage space. For instance, a mural. What would be our, our policy on that? You know, I mean, it really comes down to it sounds to me to be a maintenance issue because there currently is no ordinance in the city of South Pasadena that says that private that you can not put up any mural that you want to put up so long as it's not commercial in nature. Okay, there is nothing in the city of ordinance that says that. So, you know, anyone can put up a mural. In fact, you'll recall there was the people from the church that came by that wanted to, our permission. And we said, well, you don't really need our permission. You can do it. And they're still working at it. And one of these days that will be finished. That blue tarp's gonna come off. There's gonna be art there. Um, but I think we really need to get to the point of, of what we're doing here, which is let's determine how much space we've got, what benefit the city gets from it, and importantly, what are we going to do about the mural? If it's just a matter of discussing the maintenance, we can work that out. Almost everything is gonna to have to go to our very dearly loved but overworked city attorney, who's gonna probably have to deal with a lot of the issues of that. But let's just assume for a moment that whoever was gonna donate the mural said, we will maintain it in perpetuity. Well, it doesn't seem to me that we would have any kind of issue. It doesn't seem to me that there would necessarily be a problem. So I'm just saying that one way or another, we should decide, as you're saying, uh, what it is we're going to get out of this, how we're going to benefit, and let's move forward with it. Okay, well, um, do we have an action item here, or are we just continuing to? Uh, uh, <laughs> Madam Chair, yes. <laughs> Madam Chair, um, if if the commission would like to provide um, direction mm -hmm. on this particular staff report, 
um, you may, and your recommendation could be, be sure to include this in the broader handbook work. Okay. Yes, um, I, yes, I would like to okay. recommend that. And I would like to ask staff uh, to put this within a broader framework as you work to develop a handbook for a citywide art policy. I would very much like to see a timeline put on this because, you know, when those kids came to us with the idea of the mural, we told them very clearly, it is not likely you will still be in school by the time that this is decided. And several of them have already graduated. Now, we can move forward at a leisurely, thoughtful pace. I know that Anna Lee has been working very hard on it. Anna Lee and Chris have both been working hard on this. Um, I would like to see a timeline attached to this. And, you know, hopefully I'd like to see an end goal of like, when do we think we will have a policy that, and again, we can only recommend it to council, but when would we have something that we can give to council to say, please approve this and make this our new CD public arts policy? Well, our, our ad hoc uh, group is reporting tonight, so we can get a sense of where we are and what we're doing. Um, okay, so shall we move on then? Um, thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you yeah, very that much. That was really helpful. Thank you. Um, so we now move to our first action item, number seven, the Flores Adobe Public Art Project. Is that it? Sorry. They didn't have fancy microphones when I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> to talk to you and to share, to get your ideas and your feedback, just as you have given to the previous speaker, about a project that has come to our fore. Uh, first, under the uh, encouragement of uh, then Councilman, or co Councilman and then Mayor Michael Cacciati, uh, regarding El Adobe Flores. I don't know how many of you are aware of the Adobe Flores. It's South Pasadena's oldest uh, building. It's still a residence. It was built in the 1830s when this was uh, part of Mexico. And its historical significance, its artistic significance, and its architectural significance are very, very important. The historic significance is this was the last Mexico's last outpost in Alta California in 1847. This is where the Mexican military leader, Flores, and he was also the acting governor, met and decided that the battles that they had won and lost against the invading United States forces, uh, they were gonna be outnumbered and outgunned and that they should accept uh, an opportunity to meet with John Fremont and uh, negotiate a peaceful settlement to end the bloodshed on both sides. So it's a building of international significance. It's also been restored and maintained and kept up over the years. It's still a residence. And it has a very, very important way uh, to represent what the city is, what this area is, and what it's become. Can we go to the next? Oh, I do it on this one. Is that it? Uh, OK. It's been well preserved, as you can see. And uh, about 100 years ago, they had a major work on it to keep it together. And there's been a family that's owned this now for more than 50 years. Our idea is to recognize the Adobe Flores through public art. Adjacent to 
the Adobe Flores is this property here, which is owned by the city. It's on Garfield as Garfield curves up and goes just north of Garfield Park, becomes Gravelia. And it's, uh, it's city land. It's not right next to the Adobe, which is a private residence, and we want to respect that. But it's an opportunity to put public art in a public place. This is one of the most heavily trafficked areas in South Pasadena because that's how people get to the, the freeway coming up. And it's, it's a nice, uh, nice piece of land that people could look at and pause. The uh, idea is, and they were bringing it here as a preliminary ideas, we're not asking for any formal approval or anything like at this point, would be some public art uh, that would look uh, Mexican recognizing this is adobe, and they were recognizing a piece of this. Uh, but it would be up to the artist to decide how to do this. And it would be visible as people come up Garfield and probably as they're coming down Gravelia as well. The architectural detail uh, would be in, in the art. We would like to, and I don't know if this is within your realm or not, uh, maybe surround it not by grass, but by local native uh, succulents or cactus and such, and have it blend into the regional landscape. If any of you have been to the Adobe Flores, you know there's a cactus garden right in front of it representing that. So we would like to think about uh, making that part of this as well. We're looking at uh, doing something with ceramic tile that would uh, be preserved and that would be long lasting as many public arts have done. Now what I'll be showing now is the, and what I have been showing is a production that's been put together by Lori Rush, who is a art history faculty member at um, Cal State Los Angeles and a number of other uh, community colleges. She's on the South Pasadena Preservation Foundation leadership and she's our point person for this project and she's produces. Unfortunately tonight she's under the weather and so she's uh, called me off the bench to present this. So the artistic ideas and the creativity and the research has been very well done by Lori. She did her master's thesis, looked at Mexican public artists who did works in the United States during the 1930s, as those of you know history, Diego Rivera, Siqueiros, and others were up here in that period. So she's well versed in the kind of art that we might be able to show. This is one example. Uh, you can't quite see the name of the person, Michael Hillman, work in Glendora. This is by Jose Antonio Aguirre, who has works in uh, El Sereno, Azusa, and internationally as well in the public art to give you an idea of what we might be thinking of. These are two examples of these works, Hillman's on the left and uh, Aguirre's on the right. The mural art uh, helps define our community. It gives a micro history, a focus point of this, where this land is, the importance of this adobe, and gives us a sense of pride that there is a legacy here that predates the creation of this city and that also is still here. Uh, we're thinking too of uh, interpretive signage so that people, if they were to approach it or go up, could look and see pieces where they could tell the story, starting with the indigenous. We're not gonna, we wouldn't wanna start with the first Spaniard that arrived here, but the uh, people that were here before in the rancho, San Pascual was given, and then take it through uh, either going backwards or forwards, different elements of the adobe so people can approach, see, learn about it without having to approach it. Now, there are significant artistic connections, which uh, Laurie can speak to better than I can, but this has a very rich artistic history. Uh, let's, we'll show you some of the slides. This is an architectural a magazine from 1931, after the Adobe Flores had been uh, re uh, restored, and talks about the important work and the careful work that they did to maintain its identity, as it had it had been added on to over the years, and they took down some of the non-conforming additions and put it together. 
Uh, Carlton Winslow is a significant architect, and he also has some other buildings adjacent to the Adobe Flores, which are of the Mexican Spanish uh, architecture. This is uh, that he did this Garfield block. He, he restored the uh, Adobe Flores and was so inspired that it, about 100 years ago, they did these, I think, four or five buildings that are along the way that are of the same style of that. When I grew up here, these were run down, who wants to live their places, 1950s. And now they've been very beautifully restored by the, the owners here. Um, Norman Stiles Chamberlain was a significant artist of the era and of the period. And then about 100 years ago, 1923, he did art related paintings connected to the Adobe Flores. And uh, these are some representations. We might put these on the interpretive signage along the way. Here are some examples of them, of his work. And his, uh, I guess the word is patron, sponsor, was Arabella Huntington of the Huntington Library and family. And uh, she actually, after he did this work, I think sponsored him to go to Mexico and to learn more. Uh, there are other artworks here that we don't need to go into in this area that are not related to the Adobe Flores, but Lori is very, very knowledgeable and very thorough. And so she identified other art indigenous related artworks in the area, which she can speak to. What we'd like to hear today is to thank you for allowing us the time to see if there's any interest in this. If there is, we would continue to do work. It would work with you and with city staff. Uh, Allison McKenzie has been very helpful to us. And then we would come back at some point with something more formal. It, it would be on city land, which this uh, commission has some responsibility for. Uh, we've met uh, with city staff and uh, with the public art, he was public works uh, director as well. So it's kind of, how shall I say, it's in the, uh, it's in the range of possibility, but we need good hands on board to make it happen. I'd be glad to answer any questions that I had. Please don't ask me any detailed art history questions, <laughs> given that we have very well qualified art historians here and uh, Laurie would be better equipped to answer them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that presentation. Do we have questions? Um, it seems like a great project and it seems like there's a good amount of thought put into it. And I admire everything that Preservation Foundation and Lori has done um, for this. I'm wondering what exactly is Preservation Foundation prepared to do in terms of making this a reality? So do are you willing to put together plans put money toward it um going a step forward it's a great concept and assuming that the concept flies where would you go with this we well, want to take it one step at a time so if if we were to go ahead and plan everything and bring it to you and you say no well it's you know, not anything we're interested in it would have been a not good use of our time. So, if you, well, what what are you thinking of, though? I mean, are you, we're thinking of like a uh, sort of a putting some plans together. This uh, commission, I think, a year ago, announced that they had a grant program. I understand no grants were made because of a lack of a policy. So we might come back for that. There certainly would be fundraising opportunities here. I have no idea. Maybe you have better about the expense involved. I'm involved with uh, an art project in uh, Monrovia and some have some idea if it's not a mural, uh, what it would be. But you know, we would have to work with people who are interested in this to make it happen. Uh, if you were to do it as one of your grants or application for a grant, I assume you'd have a competition and you'd have some uh, you know, method by which you would review them and, and look at them. So we're willing to go all the way, but we don't, I can't commit that we have all the money to go all the way. I've been looking at that property since 1956. And uh, it's, it's just north of where my paper route was for the Star News. And uh, I, I can wait until we can get it done. But we've gotten, I should say, just as somebody who came in into this, I'm, I'm new to the Preservation Foundation. 
And I have been very much impressed by the people on our board who Odom Stamps and others that have come in and they've really stepped up and, and gotten involved with this. So, uh, and Lori's just one example, but we have other people working on other elements. So I don't know if that answers your question, but it's it, yes, it it, it's Thank the you. most honest answer I can give today. Sure. I mean, I, essentially, tell me, tell me if I'm getting it wrong. It sounds like it's a great idea if we happen to have some spare change. It's that a great idea if the right people think it's also a good idea. So if you say, yeah, we'd like to see what you can do with this. We'll we'll do something. And also your guidance would be helpful. You know, well, you know, that's nice, but maybe this angle would be better than anyway. Hi. Hi. You know, I loved your presentation. Thanks so much. I love the way the South Pasadena uh, Preservation Committee is thinking and thinking in terms of art in this way. I think kind of maybe as you were here and you kind of sat in on our last discussion, we've had another, you know, similar project kind of come our way that has been stalled because of a lack of an art policy. So I think we're in pedal to the metal here. Um, to get an, a, a policy together, which would help kind of inform and guide um, bodies like yourself that are have these great ideas uh, that need kind of a guideline of how the commission or the city of right. South Pasadena operates, how we would go about uh, selecting artists for something like this, uh, the kind of uh, criteria involved, um, a kind of larger picture. Um, uh, uh, issues. And um, I know that we're working and we want to work very hard on this. And I think it's really hard for us, um, or I, I, you know, for, I speak from, for, for myself, but I think uh, my fellow commissioners to really kind of weigh in without the kind of more fleshed out, broader uh, public art policy for the city of South Pasadena. And once we have that, then we kind of know where we're going so we don't approve something like we did the black lives matter mural and then have it uh, stalled at the council level uh because of a lack of a policy so your advice would be to i think this policy is going to happen fairly I, i'm hoping sooner than later and that um that would uh be very helpful to you okay. in kind of understanding the, the the way the flow of something like this uh, in the near future. But I would keep your enthusiasm uh, alive and great ideas. Uh, Commissioner Wong has. Yeah, I, I, this is just more of a comment. Um, I, I'm excited that you brought this up to us. I, I think it's an idea. Uh, and I think if we get support, uh, it could be something great. Uh, we've had uh, developers uh, who want to use that, who need to use the 1%, but it's it's refreshing for you to come in who's not a developer and just say, hey, this is a great idea. Uh, and so I really appreciate that. I, I really enjoyed the presentation. Um, and, you know, it's just, I, I think you being here puts pressure on us to kind of uh, get that policy going, but also maybe pressure on the city council <laughs> to also uh, get that going, uh, you know, or be, you know, uh, you know, maybe approve it once we, once we get it together. Um, in, in terms of guidance, um, you know, there's some of the other presentations, uh, you know, we've recommended to even the developers is maybe not being as prescriptive. Um, and I, I think it's all about the history and acknowledging the history uh, and that is enough. Um, but, you know, and, and it might have just been an offhand remark when it's like, oh, we want it to be Mexican looking. Um, I, I think it'd be great to engage with artists and give them maybe some parameters um, uh, and let them maybe decide of, of how it's going to be. And the parameters of like would be perhaps, you know, addressing history, uh, addressing the site uh, specificity. Um, but those are getting into the details, which, you know, I think uh, we could discuss later on when, when we get some traction on this. But, I, you know, I just wanted to let you know that I'm really excited about any potential, uh, you know, and we're going to slowly have all these things uh, ready to, you know, be discussed once we have that policy. Um, so I, I just wanted to thank you for, for the presentation. Okay. Thank you. That's I, great. I, myself, I'm excited about any, any project uh, that addresses some of the history that engages with some contemporary artists or artists. Uh, 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 in South Pasadena. So I just want to let you. Thank you. Thank you. The guidelines would be helpful. The Mexican comment for me only because we're recognizing the Mexican adobe. 
Oh yeah. That, yeah. I mean, I get it. I get it. It makes you know, sense yeah. to do it. Uh, or California, maybe I should have. And said. I'm saying that we don't. I'm not saying that we don't want that. It's just sometimes, like you know, it's just giving. No, you want to give the artist artistic, artistic freedom. freedom to uh, to yeah. to show what they can do. Yes. yes. And then we decide what, or you and, would and decide. It might very well be Mexican, but we don't want to tell them that. Hey, you have to do something that looks Mexican. Okay. Are there any other questions, comments, suggestions, ideas? Any other? Um, I just have I have one comment is uh, it's very it's exciting to to hear about this because the only reason I know about the Adobe Flores is that my my son had uh, had it assigned to him as his South Pasadena landmark during <laughs> during his um, and we had to go look for it and we I I, I had no idea where it was and um, and it like the idea of creating some sort of more visible and publicly accessible um, landmark because it's it's you know it's a it's a really important um, piece of as you say international history that is really like cited here. So um, that uh, was very exciting to me. Well, that's what struck us is that it, it's it's nestled surrounded by apartment houses mm -hmm. north of Garfield Park. Uh, and you could put a nice piece of public art there, but people wouldn't see it. But if you move it out to the city land mm -hmm. on uh, on Garfield, then you get the traffic and you get the, the visibility of public art. It would really would be public. Well, thank, thank you for your you comments, for and I'll report back to our uh, our board. And we look forward to working with you on this. Thank, thank you. you. Thank very you very much. much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, Okay, great. Well, um, thank you. And we now um, move on to the comments from the council liaison. No comments? Nothing to report? No comments? Okay. Are we witnessing a first? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, thank you very much, uh, Council Member Cacciati. We now hear comments from our ad hoc committee. Are there any comments from our ad hoc? Oh, committee? yes. <laughs> Since, yes, I'm happy to speak on behalf of the ad hoc committee, which consists of Chris, myself, um, and members of the city team. Um, I, I hope that everyone got a chance to look at the memo that uh, we crafted really as Chris and I kind of going through and tasked with this um, project of trying to help. Um, come up with uh, and advise with city um, art policy. Um, uh, we went through a series of different policies as a starting point to do research to just get us going on how this, you know, how it works, uh, the verbiage. Um, and um, as the research notes revealed, uh, looked at four or five different cities to get going. Um, and evaluating the various policies. And in the process of that, at the top of this was the city of Laguna Beach, which I thought had an excellent, uh, uh, we agreed uh, public art policy. It was very clear, it was very well written, um, fleshed out, uh, had very kind of contemporary ideas, defining what art is, establishing uh, the goals of the uh, city policy, uh, uh, you know, basically what we're dealing with here so far in South Pass is just the ordinances without any uh, uh, flesh uh, whatsoever. And this is an opportunity to really kind of flesh out uh, with the development of a handbook of the way that the city processes art. Um, uh, Another kind of point of interest besides the, the city of Laguna Beach that I, we both felt was was excellent, had a real clear flow in terms of uh, the way one selects artists, um, the criteria uh, for evaluation, uh, the um, the way in which, um, you know, artists are called, uh, their process, um, all of these issues that would be very helpful for, let's say, um, the art preservation group. Um, uh, 
you know, was very clear as kind of a starting point. And I know Chris and I are in the process of really kind of going through in the next month of kind of creating uh, a, an evaluation uh, uh, process for selecting uh, works of art and criteria that we'd like to see as well as I think we should continue to include kind of definitions of really what is public art. There's lots of space for lots of work. Um, and of course, this is something that we will draft up and you know, bring to the committee. Um, in the process of this also, what I really liked as well, which I think would be really helpful for the city of South Pasadena, was um, the um, uh, city of um, Palm Desert. Uh, because what they do really well is they have a whole page uh, of developer guidelines, which are basically privately initiated public art projects, which is what you know we get a lot of of these developers coming to us, uh, and uh, you know, you know they don't they're not arts people. Uh, we can consider you know they they have a a, a very um, well-established kind of arts regist artist registry as a starting point. Um, and I certainly think that's something that our, our group would be really, uh, could really be helpful. It just these are really, really guidelines that we want, you know, to, to, to bring to the city's attention as, um, at, you know, uh, as a starting point, as a way to kind of, you know, address the kind of two prongs of what we're dealing with here which is this privately initiated public art and then public art as we're dealing with here they're kind of two different avenues and um uh you know we want to kind of tackle them in a in a in a thorough uh, manner that was a lot of talking chris do you have anything to add or no any, any yeah feedback you have i mean we're really in the weeds here yeah um you know going through it and you know this is just the tip of the iceberg of our notes and so forth. Definitely. And just to, to note, Annalie did the, actually most of all, <laughs> really. Um, so thank you so much for that. Um, a really thorough uh, kind of summation of a lot of different cities' um, policies. And I think another thing to note about um, the Laguna Beach policy, which we, we talked about um, uh, at length, actually, because it, it was it seemed so um, suited to our interests and our goals here and in, in, as a commission. Um, was the, the, the language that they used was very um, uh, it, not jargonistic, did not sound uh, governmental, but it um, was very uh, thorough and easy for um, lots of different kinds of people to understand exactly what was needed and um, uh, expected and required of them um, in, in this whole process. So that's, uh, you know, that another thing to note that, that um, we should keep in mind as we're crafting this. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know if there's anything Any else. Any comments or questions for our work? Power on, make it happen. <laughs> And then, yeah, so we're trying to come up with something within like a month. Yeah, I think you know, that. we're pedal to the metal. We, I mean, there's clear need for this um, to just kind of move forward. So with the help, um, you know, of staff to get something going here and, uh, you know, really move forward so we can process, you know, donation requests, mm -hmm. uh, members of the community that come. Uh, so the city council, you know, isn't, you know, has a clear idea of what's going on. I mean, there's becoming more and more, you know, urgent need. And also, of course, our, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, development projects that are coming through. Right? These, we need to have a plan mm -hmm. for dealing with that as well. So, yeah. So that's our report. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions for the ad hoc committee? I don't have any questions. I just want to thank you for all the hard work uh, yeah. that's been going on. And I, I'm looking forward to uh, being able to chip in. At, yeah, at we're going to, we're looking yeah. forward to your chip in. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, thank you very much, um, Emily. Um, uh, let's see. Um, uh, do we have any comments from our public art? Commission from our commissioners. Should we begin with 
Jewish person? Nothing <laughs> <laughs> to say? Anyone else have any comments? I just wanted to welcome you again. Uh, you know, I'm really uh, happy that we're a, a body of five again. Uh, so, um, so, so welcome. Um, I, you know, I, actually, I do have a, a comment that, uh, you know, I just sometimes um, I, like, I've lost track the last time we met, mm -hmm. and I'm just sometimes I concerned. I, I actually, so this is a little more serious. I, I am concerned about our meeting, our 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 scheduled meetings, and yeah. if that's enough, uh, and, and and if. You know, do we have any control, or do we just get a notice like, "Oh, the meeting's finally on"? Uh, so, I, those are some some questions that I I do have of of uh, of having regularly scheduled meetings. You know, and I don't think we ever came to the resolution. Like, I was, you know, when we found out they're cutting down the meetings, and I get it, capacity of staff, and we don't want to kill the staff uh, running these meetings. But at the same time, like I was, you know, at one point I was trying to advocate, like, well, maybe we meet every other month or six times a year. Uh, but I, I, I don't know if that was ever discussed or, you know, and so we just got thrusted into this like meeting kind of occasionally. Mm -hmm. And so if I could, if we could get some schedule um, or, and some, you know, for me, it's just like, it seems like we're always getting canceled, you know, in terms of our meetings. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering why that is. I, I know there's been conflicts, but then can we reschedule like right away? Uh, because I, I feel that some of the canceled meetings have never been rescheduled. Uh, maybe it's just, you know, I'm not paying attention to my calendar. I'm busy doing other things, but that, that is a concern that I do have. Yes. Actually, I'd be happy to follow along with that. And in fact, if I'm looking at these notes correctly, it's been five months since our last meeting. One of the things that these notes um, don't reflect was some of what happened at the last meeting, which was we did review, if you recall, public arts ordinance, the existing ordinances. And I did mention this to Allison when we chatted. Um, that the existing ordinance, which was a surprise to all of us, as I recall at our last meeting, one of the requirements for developers was that they enlist the help of an art advisor. And I'm not sure that we felt very comfortable with that. I'm not sure that we felt that that was necessary. Um, so I, what I'd like to do would be to ask for uh, the chair to agenda, put on the agenda for the next meeting, a review of the existing public arts ordinances and see whether or not we care to modify those. Okay, I right. would like to ask that you put that on the agenda. And if there's a second person to do it, it would probably happen. I think there, there may be a question about procedure for reviewing ordinances or how does that- Well, I don't think we can really discuss it unless it's agendized. And in order to get okay. on the agenda, you have to have at least two members of the commission agree to discuss okay. it on the next agenda. Am I right, council member? That's what I thought. Well, if I do, I'll second that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I believe that for our next meeting that we should review it. Also, um, if we're talking about frequency of meetings, I don't know if it's something that we can discuss right here, if it's something that needs to be agendized, but I concur that I realize city staff is tasked. And I realize that one of the reasons we have not had very many meetings is because there has been a very large turnover in city yeah. staff, right? Yeah. Um, the people who were here last time are not anywhere around this time. I know. I I I I just want to say before we agendize that and put more pressure on our staff, you know, we're working really hard in our ad hoc committee uh, to try and get this public policy fleshed out, and that would really, I think, uh, you know, address some of the issues that you have in terms of the ordinances. So I think instead of kind of burdening them with, we're not burdening them, but taking up their time on this if we could kind of try and focus on this handbook of guidelines um and because i know we have a meeting what in two is it two mm -hmm. months and if we could focus on that and then based on what we what what we achieve there then mm -hmm. uh, you know focus on the ordinances if, if that is still well, and that's that fine. So I would do. I would be happy to 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 work with you on that. However, we have to understand that there are developers bringing projects in front of us. And until such time as we modify the ordinance of the city, those advisors are technically supposed to, I mean, those uh, developers are technically supposed to have an advisor with them. Now, 
you know, we can continue on without and we can recommend that things be done as they are. But I'm just to say to be in compliance with what the existing ordinance, with what city ordinance says, you know, we, we should review it. We should probably review it. So I'm happy to, to wait. If the you want to hold that. it off, well, all right, we will, we can put it off to another meeting. I also want to say that I concur with Commissioner Wong, um, again, not to overburden staff, but four times a year, and it ends up being like five months ago was the last time that we had a meeting. It's really not enough. It's really not enough for us to get anything done. And I'm I'm concerned primarily about the ad hoc committee, but also any other projects that we want to get done. We probably should be meeting more often than quarterly. Yes. I believe bi-monthly would be appropriate, as, as Stephen Wong said. And finally, um, one of the reasons that I was talking about the agenda was that at our last meeting, one of the things that was promised to us by staff was that we would have a report on every project coming down the pipeline to us. And I don't see that in this agenda in this agenda packet. Um, is it there? Did I miss it? Um, I have briefed uh, all commissioners on the pipeline and on the annual work plan. Um, that was something that was sent to you via email. So it's possible that I have the wrong email address. Well, maybe you do because I didn't get a packet, but I'm looking at what's in here and I'm looking at the presentations tonight. And I'm not seeing anything that discusses any of the development projects that are in works. Yes, yeah, so there have are such a list? there are four projects current, five projects currently that are subject to the one percent for the art program. Right. Of which two have come to the um, commission for an initial look see. Um, part of the challenge, as you all have mentioned in one way or another tonight, is that. Um, that staff has not had a formal procedure to follow in terms of preparing those presentations for formal consideration and approval. And so that's one of the most urgent pieces of the equation that we need to address because you're right, there are three others that, um, that will need to come forward. Um, you know, I can I can move into uh, staff comments just to say that um, it, I'm you know, not really it is my the floor, but go right ahead. It is my it is my strongest desire to stand up and advance the work of this commission this year. It's a good year for it, um, uh, and and we can commit now with a full staff um, at the community development department to running. Um, at least four, which is what we have on the books now, and possibly six, if that is your desire, to make sure that there is enough regular, regularly scheduled meetings on the calendar so everyone feels invested in the work. That's very important. Um, we, we have capacity to staff at that level, um, and I'm happy to agree to it now. That That's is great. great. See, good things on the record. That ask for them. <laughs> um, right. And I think with that, I just also wanted to well, again, welcome Dolores. Thank you so much for being with us. And I have to say, this is a moment when council member Cacciati has nothing to say. <laughs> I, it's the first time I've heard you had nothing to say. There you go. There you go. I, I'm, thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Um, does anyone else have any other comments? Any commissioners? Okay. Um, thank you. We can move on to comments from staff. Uh, I'll only just say what I've said. We'll commit to, to uh, bi-monthly meetings. Um, we are also upset that we get keep getting bumped out of the um, chambers. So staff is working to make sure that our dates are confirmed. Um, and so we'll we'll make sure to circulate it and have the meetings also on the master calendar, which we're trying to figure out how to make sure that happens. There's a lot of uh, learning and doing uh, at the same time, um, but as we're getting up to speed, it's getting easier. So we appreciate your patience in the meanwhile. Uh, look forward to working with you this year. Thank you very much. Um, 
uh, let's see. I think that's it. Are we are we ready? Well, we to need adjourn? to know when our next meeting is going to be. April twenty sixth. Um, we can adjourn until our next uh, regular meeting, which is scheduled for Wednesday, April twenty sixth, twenty twenty three, at six thirty p.m. Good. And and with that, if I could just mention, previously it had been exactly on that date, the uh, fourth Wednesday of the month was our regular meeting time. And it seemed that that worked well because it didn't conflict with council meetings. Is that still a good good time that we should count on? So okay. every other month, Great. fourth Wednesday. Excellent. Great. Um, so I do I get to do this? Oh, meeting adjourned. Well done. At, uh, what time is it? 7.43 p.m.